Length tension relationship explains the relationship between length of the muscle and the tension in the muscle. Now before we proceed, we should just understand that there are two types of tension. One is a passive tension and one is a active tension. Passive tension is like uh, if we change the length of the muscle and it is held at that length even without stimulation. That is, it's not contracting. Then also it develops tension. It is like a spring. Suppose if we stretch the spring, there will be a tension developing in the spring, isn't it? So that is the passive tension. Second tension is active tension which develops when a muscle is stimulated. You can understand it in terms of force generated. So in this video, we will basically focus on the relationship between the length and active tension in the muscle. So you see in this slide, we have two graphs. In this graph, you see X axis represents the muscle length in centimeters and Y axis represents the tension. While in this other graph, X axis represents the sarcomere length in micrometers and the Y axis represents the tension. However, in this second graph, we are referring only to the active tension. So if you see in books, it is uh, represented as like percentage tension. Okay. So first let's see the first graph. See, we will focus on the active tension it's only as I've already told, right? So you see what is happening here that as muscle length is increasing, the active tension is increasing. But after a certain length, active tension starts decreasing. Now generally our muscle length in a resting state is somewhere here. So when we stretch the muscle or uh, we can say increase the length of the muscle, what happens? Now you see the active tension, the force of contraction increases. But if you stretch the muscle too much, then the force of contraction will decrease. You can correlate it with like um, a runner. You might have seen in some uh, athletic activities that a runner attains a certain position before running. So what they are doing, they are actually stretching their muscle so that the force of contraction is more and they can achieve a greater speed at the beginning itself. However, if the position is not good, the stretching is too much, then you see the force of contraction is going to decrease. So this relationship between the length of the muscle and the force of contraction is known as the frank starling relationship. Very popularly we uh, read it in uh, cardiac muscle but it also applies to skeletal muscle that is force of contraction is directly proportional to the initial length of the muscle but within physiological limits. So frank starling law is also applicable to the skeletal muscle. So what is the physiological basis of this frank starling law? So that is understood in terms of this second graph. That is, we correlate that what is the sarcomere length and what is the tension generated. So you see, similar kind of graph is obtained that as sarcomere length increases, the tension increases, but after certain point, the tension starts decreasing. Okay, so now let's try to understand this, how sarcomere length affects the tension. So I have marked certain points on this graph and uh, you see sarcomere length I have represented only two points because uh, here the tension generated is maximum. So this represents decreasing sarcomere length and this represents the increasing sarcomere length. So let's see what happens at point A. See at A the sarcomere length is quite less. So we know that sarcomere consists of actin and myosin filaments. So the sarcomere length is such that most of the actin filaments have overlapped each other. Now for force of contraction we want that these myosin head should interact with the active sites of the actin. Isn't it? More the interaction more they will pull the actin. 
Now here in this position you see almost all the actin is overlapped and hardly there can be any more shortening of the sarcomere. So very less active sites on the actin actually interact with the myosin hence and shortening of the sarcomere will be minimal. So obviously you see the tension generated the force is very less. But as the length increases see at position B what is going to happen this is the state of the sarcomere. So more active sites on actin are actually able to interact with the myosin heads and the shortening of the sarcomere can occur more. So obviously the force of contraction will be more the tension generated will be more. So here it is represented like that. But at the length of approximately 2 micrometers of the sarcomere what happens that almost all myosin heads can interact with the active sites of actin you see like this. So that is the reason that the tension generated is maximum at this place. But same thing is also happening at point D, isn't it? See, the tension generated is same at C and D. Why is that so? Because at D, you see, even at D, all the myosin heads can actually interact with the active sites of actin. Why is that? Why there is no difference between C and D? You see that at sarcomere length C, this portion of the actin, it is actually present in the central region which is the tail region of the myosin filament. Here there are no myosin heads which should interact with actin, isn't it? So whether the actin is like this or like this, it is almost the same because the maximum number of active sites of actin are actually interacting with the myosin heads. So, at sarcomere length of 2 micrometers and 2.2 micrometers, we get maximum tension. So, you are understanding that how Frank Starling law can be explained at the sarcomere level. Okay. Now, if we increase the length further, what is going to happen? We are seeing that there is a decrease in the active tension. Why so? Because now the actin filaments are much farther apart. So let us take the extreme example of E. What is happening at E when there is so much increase in sarcomere length? See, none of the active sites on the actin filament are actually interacting with the myosin head. So with no interaction, there will be no contraction and hence no tension will be generated. So that is the basis of length tension relationship. So if I want to summarize in one line, then uh, we can say that length tension relationship depends on the degree of overlap of actin and myosin and when we stretch a muscle a bit for doing any work which is also known as preloading of the muscle it produces optimum overlap between actin and myosin. So this is the condition where optimum overlap is produced. Okay, So that is all for length tension relationship of skeletal muscle. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, do like and share the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Open. Thank you.